My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slay the Spire. Alright, 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 alright. Let's just play a safe build. A safe build, damn it. Ooh, lose 7 max HP. All of these are actually pretty damn good options right now. Uh, looks like we can snipe out maximum of 1 elite if we take the enemies in extreme combat to have 1 HP. But 7 max HP for that early shot to be... Ooh, just tasty. Sounds good to me. I use the zap there just because in two turns time it deals as much damage as a strike, but it also means that had I drawn dual cast without the zap, I would have had the kill already. Take a streamline here just so that I can take out some early elites. Ooh, sure, I'll take a free relic. Hell yeah. We got the tiny chest. Upon pickup, gain 30 gold. You're 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms. As well as immediately getting to remove that regret and take Kunai. Uh, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one dex. I'll also take Go for the Eyes, and if I had enough, I would have taken a Steam Barrier. Relic, Relic, Relic. Hey, Relic! Sundial, every three times you shuffle your draw pile, gain two energy. This character actually has a card that shuffles their draw pile for them, being Reboot. So we can advance that ourselves, which is nice. There is a four elite path here, and I'm actually not too scared to go down it. Primarily owing to the fact that we have the kunai. So with opportunistic turns, we can end up with some real good decks going on. Beautiful. And three attacks this turn. Yeah, we do have three attacks this turn. However, we should still play the defend. I attack the backliner now because two zaps would have been a kill on them. Damn, really every other card left in the deck would have been really nice there. Oh well. So we lost a fair amount of HP in this combat. But this is probably the worst of the elite combats for us currently with this build. Ornamental fan. Every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. Well, now we're incentivized to take a bunch of zero cost cards. Just because kunai and ornamental fan both triggering at the same time is ridiculous. Right. Another speed potion there. Damn. FTL versus Steam Barrier. I'll take the FTL just as a great way to trigger kunai and ornamental fan yet again. So I'm waking the enemy up at the end of this turn pretty much regardless, right? I'll be using these speed potions just in case. I feel like I should use one this turn. It's only 5 HP, but 5 HP is pretty significant. Yep. See how wild our block can suddenly get. And we've even got a dual cast in the next hand. We've got this. Easy. There goes the Lug Vulan. I'll take Mango. Raise max HP by 14. That also heals us for 14, which is really nice. Another go for the eyes is probably too many. I could just take a leap as a powerful defensive card, though. Bag of marbles at the start of each combat apply one vulnerability to all enemies with the amount of attacks that we have to put in our deck to trigger the kunai repeatedly. This is actually kind of good. Come on. That's not three attacks. Yeah, I'll use a single defend this turn. Now, I'll actually play out two strikes here before I FTL because I do want the strikes to be present in my new deck. Great. And just full defend. 
All I need is one damage next turn. Hey, got that sentry down. Beautiful. So do I go for the final elite on this path? We have a lot of relics for floor one. I really want to. I literally started this episode by saying, oh, we're just going to play safe. But now immediately I'm playing risky. God damn it, Ryan. Runic Dedicahedron, if your HP is full, gain energy at the start of your turn, as well as probably like a pass on all of these. Closest would be that Cold Snap. I'll take a Cold Snap. Hmm. I'm thinking I either rest here, then go for the Elite, or... Yeah, you know what, I'm going to rest here, go for the Elite. Oh, yes! Multiplied hand. When we play a power card, a random card in your hand goes zero for the rest of the turn. Extremely powerful for a class that has a bunch of synergies with... Or a bunch of synergies, sorry, a bunch of builds that are power reliant. Yeah, it looks like we're going to take four damage over the course of this entire battle. Yeah, pretty much. Definitely didn't need to rest, as it turned out. Oh, well. Smiling Mask. Merchant's card removal service now always costs 50 gold, as well as Reboot, which I was literally talking about before, being a trigger for the Sundial. It's also worth noting that Reboot is a really good card to have in your hand after you play a bunch of zero-cost cards, because then you refill your entire hand. Hell yeah. Yeah. Don't want another streamline. Just using that for damage at the moment. Upgrading that reboot is really, really good for floor fights. But upgrading like zap or streamline is really good for the boss fight. I'm going to go for streamline. Because I think it's also really going to be good for floor fights. I think I've got a little bit of weakness in each of those areas right now. There's one point of dex for us on the first turn. Once we get to like three points of dex, nothing can really touch us in this combat. Huh. It's a real poor draw for us. You are kidding me. Well, I have to use another attack at the very least just to get the extra point of dex, as well as it gives us the trigger of the ornamental fan. Couldn't have been one more attack in that hand? Asking for a friend. We picked up our three points of dex. We should be fine. Barring, like, ridiculously bad draws. Yeah, I could have struck as well there. That's my bad. Okay. <sighs> Beautiful. Basically need streamline this turn, otherwise, yeah, the enemy doesn't go down. That said, we would have been able to defend with most hands are there anyway. Enemy down. All for one is exactly up. Oh, got him. All for one is obviously the card we're looking for because it returns a bunch of zero cost attacks to our hand and then we play them again and get more decks. Unfortunately, I also really would have liked an energy here. Just one energy relic would have been nice. Don't need two, just the one's fine. Uh, it might be Runic Pyramid as at the end of your turn, you no longer discard your hand. But the problem is because we don't have any extra energy, we would just fill up our hand with a bunch of cards we never intend to play. But at the very least, we would always have a defense in hand to to defend with. I know, I know. Dumb sentence, but still. We do need a lot of upgrades on this floor, so I'm looking at a path that has an early shop, three early upgrades, and only one elite. I'm pretty happy with that. 
This is when we start to play Say. Hey, immediately my Runic Dodecahedron is deactivated. Of course it is. All right, I don't want to play that reboot here. And what? Well, we should have a kill next turn, right? Yeah. Pull him back. Ooh. Okay, Turbo is really, really, really powerful with All for One because you pull Turbo back from All for One and then you get a bunch of extra energy. And especially if you have like a hologram as well, you can chain off like that. Especially if you make the hologram cost zero at some point. However, Steam Barrier is a lot of defense. It's really, really cheap. And it does decrease its card block by one every single time you play it. But we're increasing it by more than that every time we cycle with the Kunai. And it gets bulled back by the All for One. And it's a card that I can just play in order to thin down my hand so that I don't overdraw. I think I have to take Steam Barrier. It's not common to full defend on the first turn against these. 22 is a rough hit. But at the very least, we're fine on the second turn. <clears throat> Hell yeah. That's just a bunch of decks. Claw totally fits in this deck, obviously, but... Claw kind of does provide the thing that I'm missing, which is ramp uh, ramping damage. Alright, I think I should start taking Claw and start removing other cards. Uh, okay, Calipus is actually really good in this deck as well, because we do get a lot of block. Deep Breath isn't that good, just because while it does shuffle the deck, shuffle your discard pile and draw pile, so it does trigger the Sundial, the bad thing about it is that if it's in my hand... Oh, no, wait, I can just leave it in my hand! Oh my god, so many of these things here are really good for us. I'm taking Calipus, Deep Breath. And then do I also take the Void? No. What would I want from this, ideally? And Caridian. Necronomicon is a problem. So Necronomicon will double play Streamline and double play All for One. Double playing All for One is just 10 more damage. Double playing Streamline is 40 damage instantly. And it reduces it to cost zero. So then I can pull it back from all for one. That's the only reason I'm going to be taking this. Because now I have a curse in my deck that is unremovable. Nothing I can do. And that curse will just take up space in my hand. It's going to be real unfortunate for us. I need to use the extra defend that turn, I don't think. Okay. Go for the eyes. Streamline for that easy double hit. I'm actually going to reboot here. I'm looking for a single zero cost attack. Beautiful, because that's a bunch of extra defense for us. Let's just full defend this turn. Unfortunately, keeping a bunch of cards in hand is really, really rough for us. Damn. Yeah, because we're going to have difficulty playing them out so that we can actually use all for one. I mentioned this problem literally as soon as I took this build, but it's still frustrating. Also, our whole hand is about to become wounds if this Taskmaster stays alive. At least with a bunch of extra points of decks, 
It'll be a lot easier for me to defend. Okay. Enemy down. This fight could have been a lot worse. Pantograph at the start of boss combat's heal for 25 HP, as well as a bunch of cards I don't need. Okay, I need to upgrade things to be zero cost just so that I can get them out of my hand. So that's going to be zap and dual cast instantly here. Nunchku, every time you play 10 attacks, gain an energy. That is really powerful for us. I kind of want to go for that extra elite now. Okay, so I'll attack here, triggering the malleable again. The enemy now has four block. I'll use the go for the eyes against that. Beautiful. Maximum damage I could have dealt that turn. You do have to order your attacks relatively well against this enemy in particular. I'll reboot. Not what I was looking for there, unfortunately. Semi-reasonable defense. Alright. Just hold on to two defensive cards here and then I should be fine. Hey, easy. Echo form. <clears throat> Mummified Hand is really good because Echo Form will make something else cost zero. So at least the Echo Form isn't the only thing that I can play in a turn. But also, it's in a deck with a bunch of zero cost cards. Echo Form can just be nutty. It's, it's worth taking. The problem is hands like this that have really, really low value. So I do need some draw in this deck as well. Like a skim, an upgraded skim would be a great pick. Mm-hmm. Still a pretty ridiculous amount of block to be able to generate on a single turn like that. Come on and yeah, beautiful. We got this. This is one of the harsher fights that you can encounter on this floor. Dex potion as well as... Ooh, nice. Just a single charge battery. More than happy to take it. Alright. Reboot for some more damage. Hey! Managed to kill the Centurion on first... Turn one. That is a really good turn right there. I think I just have lethal if I do this, right? Something like that. Having a single beam cell in this deck is going to be really powerful. We'll definitely use the dex potion, the explosive potion here. It's just really important that I kill the target on turn one so that the backline isn't guaranteed to act. Never mind, they decided to act anyway. Unfortunately, that attack doesn't get to duplicate. It takes a bunch of damage off of the fields. Lame. Come on, two points of dex there, easily. Echo form gets out this turn. Beautiful. We're in great position now. Backliner is attacking this turn, eh? Okay. Forgot I had Echo Form out. Well, that drew us two cards at the very least, which is still nice. Just 
27 and 5 incoming damage. Yeah, we're just dead to that anyway. Alright, good. So now we've got the full block. This fight could have been a lot worse, but gosh, it could have been a lot better as well. So when Echo Form fails to duplicate the first card, because like the target dies or something like that, um, when it fails to duplicate the first card, it will just duplicate the second. So it's fine, you're not losing out on that value. Alright. Duvu Doll, for each curse in the deck, start each combo with one strength. That is one for us. Yeah, we definitely have to rest here. Who's the Necronomicon? So this turn, I'm actually going to elect to not play my Claw. Because I don't benefit from playing it this turn. I may as well just keep it in my hand until I have a set of three attacks to play in a turn. I really want to play that Echo form here. You know what? I'm going to 50-50 it. So Claw, Steam Barrier, I'll strike, then Echo form. Hopefully you hit the awful one. Nice. So I managed to full defend, and I get my Echo Form out. This Streamline plays three times here. One, two, three. Once from the Echo Form, once from Necro, uh, Necronomicon, and once by itself. Okay. Again, I'll hold off on playing extra cards here, because I want to be able to play three cards in a single turn. We definitely want to double up on that claw. In fact, I'm going to deep breath now just to give me a chance of drawing back into that claw. Now I do need to start emptying some cards out of my hand, so I'll play some extra cards here. I should probably double the FTL. Yeah. Then leap, defend. I actually don't even want a steam barrier because I'm already full defended. So all for one, just bring back those two cards. Okay. And now I'll just play Steam Barrier because my hand is full. I want to be able to draw a full value hand. Double up on the claw. We keep zapping hand here because now we can cycle this frost orb out. We've also managed to get the enemy to transform on a turn where we're not going to be vulnerable when they've transformed, which is now. I can literally just double leap this turn and I'll be fine, but... We don't even need to. So Calipers is keeping a ridiculous amount of block for us at this point, which is just lovely. We'll... Double up on Streamline. Then we're casting Charge Battery here before the FTL so that FTL doesn't draw a card. Then we'll all for one to bring it back. See, if the if a card was drawn, I would have lost my draw pile there. Sorry, I would have reformed my draw pile, which would have lost my... Uh, and there's the couple people. Uh, I would have reformed my draw pile, which would have lost the effect from the awful one. Second ult one. Just makes a bunch of sense in this deck. Uh, no ability to take more potions, but it's extra energy. Yep. Alright, we're pretty comfy now. Uh, unless I do really dumb things, we're fine. Alright, I could take out four elites. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Am I kidding, though? I could go for four elites this floor. I don't know if I'm kidding anymore. Let's make mistakes. Let's be bad. Uh, we'll start with the deep breath here, because if you have nothing in your discard pile, it just discards and draws you two cards, which means this awful one just got a lot better. Hell yeah. Deep breath once more. Do I want to start cycling through more cards? Yeah, I just do just want to get these out of my hand. Also get additional energy next turn. Seems good to me. Don't 
Don't have three attacks in hand. Got to hold until I do. Got to know when to hold him and know when to hold him. Know when to run and know when to hold him. It's a good song, now. Nah. Cool. Then... Just normal strike. We'll be fine. Deep breath. And pretty much any draw should be able to kill here, right? We've got a lot of aggression in this deck. Eh, or not. That's fine too, though. Now we've just got six decks. We need more claws or something in this deck. So I'll play those two strikes, then Echo. I was obviously trying to hit the awful one, but didn't, but that's fine. Claw. Claw. Cycle out all the cards in my hand that have a cost. Got him. Regen potion. Not half bad. Can't take it though. Uh, Steam barrier. I have too many zero cost cards in my deck at the moment as well. I would remove a go for the eyes at this point. Oh, hell yes. Just get all those damn cards. Look at that turn one, right? Oh my God. Turn one, we've won. Oh, Pre-upgraded go for the eyes though. I need to leave space in the build for claws. Oh, I'm taking the wrong path. No. I do want this shop, though. Is the shop worth it? Not the deep breath. Wow. Maybe I just go deep breath happy flower. Then remove a go for the eyes. Having too many zero cost cards in this build makes it actually harder to use. Okay, my duplication here should probably just be on Claw. Yeah. Building our Claws faster is the ramping damage we're going to need. We're not up against Time Eater at the very end, at the very least. Okay. So this is just straight up murder. down. Hell yes! We actually even get to full defend that turn. With all of them aggressing on turn one, that's not common. Yeah, we're not going to be playing Echo Form in this combat. I'm kind of fine with that. Oh, never mind. 50-50 it? No, I don't want to 50-50 it. Don't need to take the risk. So Echo Form's Ethereal until it's upgraded. Which is why it removed itself. We'll take none of those either. Okay, Giant Head should not be able to stand up to us. Just because we play a lot of cards in a turn, and that is the bane of this enemy. I didn't want you to hit Streamline. Streamline is literally the only card in my deck that I wanted you not to hit. Damn it, Echo Form. Because now that Streamline doesn't double play from the Necronomicon, so now it's still one cost in my discard pile, which means that the All for Ones aren't going to return it. Double play Claw, obviously. Still got to play some extra cards out of my hand. One brings back a hell of a lot of cards here. Da -da Let's play through as many of them as possible. Uh, then we'll... All for one again. Play each of the cards again. Hell yes. 
Then on deep breath draw uh, two. Deep breath draw one. Yeah, 20 damage from an FTL at this point. 60 from a claw. That's why I said that this was going to be relatively easy. Nice. Giria, you can now gain strength at rest sites up to three times maximum. We do want that. There is... There's two opportunities to do it on this floor, unfortunately. Three would have been really nice. Oh, no, there's only one opportunity to do it, right? Because I need to pick up the other key as well. We went from having not enough energy to having too much energy. All for one for the return. Hell yes. Oh, what a turn. What a turn. So this isn't even primarily using claws. Uh, no. Machine learning would actually be actively bad for this deck. We would overdraw constantly. Discard the cards that we drew. Not good for us. These are the problematic hands where we don't have any draw element in it or anything like that it can be really problematic. should pretty much be all good now. Yeah. <sighs> Easy. There goes the Repulsor. I'll defend before I double streamline the Spiker there. Now all I need to do is, yeah, just find another strike and we're done. Entropic Brew. Feel, uh, of course I don't get to have that, damn. Uh, I have to take the Sapphire Key here. I don't really have a choice. Yeah. Yeah, these are the hands I'm talking about. They just don't really accomplish much, and they don't really even use all of the energy. That's why draw is necessary. The Deep Breaths are kind of pseudo-draw for us. They're not really draw, but they're going in the right direction, so we kind of forgive them. Streamline on single target. Get that kill. And could have pulled another streamline out. Damn. None of those are necessary at all. Uh, I may as well just dodge elites right now, right? Who would be able to screw me over? Okay, so this is something that I don't typically do in low-level Ascension, but I do in high-level Ascension all the time, uh, where I'm actually, like, playing for keeps. And that's... Think about every elite that could be in an elite space that you're about to go to. So, Giant Head, we dunk on Giant Head. However, this elite was Giant Head, so we know that this one can't be Giant Head. You can't get the same elite two times in a row, barring event-spawned elites like the Colosseum or the Dead Adventurer on floor one. Act one, rather. Uh, so, it can be the Reptomancer, or it can be the... The Reptomancer can kill us. No, I'm not even doing it. Uh, it could have been the Reptomancer. The Reptomancer summons daggers, and those daggers harm you. Uh, and if we just got a bad draw at the wrong time, that would be the end of us. But it also could have been the Nemesis. The Nemesis we would have been fine against. Yeah, 
so we will be taking some damage this turn there goes our runic dodecahedron unfortunately okay The important thing is just to be able to hit this transient enough that it does no damage every single turn. So I'll be keeping some cards in hand here. Ooh. Yeah, we're pretty well sorted now. Nice. Killing the transient actually does get you an achievement, but it's not this build. Claw, definitely. <laughs> Hell of a lot of work to get done on turn one right there. Play both of my defense and then reboot. Damn it. Getting awful one is exactly what I didn't want to have happen there. Oh well. Not awful one, sorry. Awful one, the. It's not awful one, it was uh, Echo Form. There we go. Gosh, how to screw that one up. Oh, double play the awful one just to get more draw. So we only really need to worry about bad draws on our first turn, because other than that, we're retaining our cards from the Runic Pyramid. And that's kind of like pseudo draw. So I guess all I really want is like bag of preparation. So that I can have a more reliable opening turn. This is a wacky deck right now. It doesn't really have like a core consistent strategy. It just has relics that are really good. Yes, I know I just turned down cool headed when I was asking for draw. I'm well aware. Okay, that frontliner is now dead to the double awful one they're about to be hit by. <clears throat> 12 defense, 3 decks. Not half bad. Come on. Another attack. No. All right. Fair enough. Just watch him die. Uh, upgraded defragment? Yeah. It's just a bunch of extra block for us in this deck right now. So, I want to lift. These extra points of strength with how many attacks we play are just ridiculous for us. Whoa! That's all of our claws in our opening hand. So, that might not look good, and it probably isn't for our opening hand, at least. But when it's suddenly going to look really good is when I draw either of my Ulf ones. I'm not going to use Deep Breath until I have my Ulf ones in hand. Nor Reboot here either, actually. Mm -hmm. Scaling those claws early is just, oh, so important. There's another Ulf one in this deck. I'm waiting. So we have uh, two Frost Orbs up. This gives us two focus, and it gives the enemy one strength. 
So we get four extra defense a turn. The enemy gets one extra damage per attack, and it can only do four attacks in a single turn. So that just means we definitely play that card. That's just a long-winded way to say that we definitely want to play that card, though. Uh, this is really unfortunate. Okay, so the final awful one is in the bottom four cards of the deck, which means I never draw back into it without forming a new deck. So now I start using my deep breaths and stuff like that. Okay. If we got really lucky there, that could have been an infinite cycle. But yes, we would have had to get really lucky. Yep, those claws are going off. Definitely should have doubled up on the claw that turn. That's entirely my mistake. I forgot that I had the Echo Form out. I always forget, like, the first turn after I've played an Echo Form. I always forget. I'm just setting up for a really good awful one turn when the enemy is awakened yet again. All right, so we'll double claw. Tool cast, strike, steam barrier, then I'm just gonna awful one. All right, I do have the beam cell, great. Enemy's probably going down this turn, right? Gosh, it looked like it. I've got to remember that I have the calipers. I can overblock per turn and I'll be fine. All right. So now we get to go with the heart. This is going to be an interesting build against the heart, considering how many cards we play a turn. Ooh, the heart has beat of death, which is not great, but it's okay. Do I smith another card? I think I don't. I think I just lift. Get that extra strength. Good, strong. All right, having 10 block on turn one is really powerful. Two strength. Okay, so here's the thing. That's five strength for me. That's two strength, right? So if I drop this liquid thorns and then take both of... Nothing happened. I didn't forget I had Sozu. You forgot I had Sozu. We both forgot I had Sozu, right? Damn it. Well, now I definitely just take, like, Anchor, Reinforced Body. This can be a really rough fight. And it looks like it probably will be for me. I want to kill the Spire Shield first, but the problem is turning my back to this means it's doing 9 by 2 because I get, I'm get i surrounded. I receive 50% more damage if I'm attacked from behind. Using a card or a potion orients my direction. Only ones that target, though. Uh, so this turn, I get 4 more block, and then I get 6, 4, 6. Okay, so yeah, I can turn around. Now you gain 30 block, which is a lot. God, I had my Echo Form out there. Obviously, I should have just double played a defensive card. And definitely should have turned around. Ugh. Ryan. That's what happens when I'm too happy with my build. All right, there we go. Guess we'll double play Dual Caster. One to bring back all those claws. Great. And then I'll just double reinforce body for a ridiculous amount. There's no touch in me anymore. On scales at the side of each combat, gain three thorns. Not half bad. Don't really want any of those. That floor. 
I'm not going to awful on this turn. It only brings back a claw. I may as well wait. That's a pretty bad hand. Ow. 60. So we need to defend against 60 this turn. At the very least, we have the weakness. Eyes, claw. A second. Have dual cast. Um, I really need like a god draw right here. And that's not going to do it. Yeah. This deck just plays way too many cards to be able to really do this effectively. We would have needed the turn one to be like a really powerful turn one like we've had before with all of the deep breaths and getting like two decks on turn one or something like that. Without that, it's just always going to be a trial for us. We came into that fight with actually a reasonable amount of HP, courtesy of the Pantograph. At the start of boss combat, healed for 25 HP. If we could have lived for another turn, it's possible we would have been able to start getting to where we really needed to be. But... Was that actually going to be winnable for us? Let's let's actually quickly check. So run history. Because we died... Right here, we died to... So we had 32 when we left, which means we entered the boss fight with 67. Yeah, we died by more than 10 HP. So even the misplays in the sp uh, shield and spire didn't kill us, ultimately. Just not drawing what we needed when we needed to draw it killed us. That said... This is still a successful run. It says slain, but we won the entire game. We completed the third act and unlocked the next level of ascension. You don't have to kill the heart for it to be a victory. I'm just saying that. I'm making sure people are aware of that because it leads to really bad discourse when it's like, oh, that deck didn't even kill the heart. You can't win the game. It's like, no. The heart isn't meant to be killed by every deck, and especially not by claw decks. Good lord. For the moment, though, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself, so there's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on the game, past, present, and future. Uh, this is the first time I've said this this series, but if you do like the content, please click like. It's a relatively low bar to meet. Hopefully I have. Uh, but it does help me get my content out to new people, and it can be really, really important, especially on episode one of the series. So I should have said it then, but I didn't. So whoops. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves regardless, and hopefully we'll see you next time.